This is the Unity 3 server page, and this is the general settings page. This will be the first page that pops up when you open it. You can now name your server, which is going to be used more in future expansions. Your same settings as before, you can choose whether to start the Unity server when you log into your Mac, show it in the dock, and what system sample rate you want to be on. You can do 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. The network port number by default is 20101, and that's the port that Unity uses to communicate through. You can change that to anything you wish, but by default it's 20101. The network interface is just asking in which way are you connected to the network. For me, I've just chosen any method, but I can specify Ethernet or Thunderbolt 1 if I wanted to. Wi-Fi would be highly discouraged. And down here is your external I.O. configuration. Attached to my Mac computer is a Tascam 16x8 device, so I'm using that as my input device and my output device. This is the Unity 3 channels page. Everything about channels is going to be configured right here on this particular page. You have six channels to work with by default in Unity 3, but you can have up to 128 channels by purchasing the expanded channels and groups add-on and thus opening up a whole bunch more channels that you can then make groups out of, and we'll get to groups in a moment. So Here's all the channels that you create, and all these channels are something unique. These are individual channels that people are going to be talking on. You label them here on the left, and you choose an abbreviation in the abbreviation section, and that abbreviation is what's actually going to show up on the application. So when, when people are using the Unity app, instead of just one through six, you can actually have this abbreviation, thus making it much more clear as to what that particular channel is. You're also going to be assigning any input and output configurations that are necessary on this page. So I have a building, building A production channel, and that Tascam that's connected to my Mac, I have chosen input one on my Tascam, which has audio, to be what's basically being injected into building A production channel, uh, that party line channel. So I'll, I'll, I'll repeat that. Audio coming into my Tascam on input one is being combined with all of the other audio on my production channel. I have given it a slight boost in its level, which I can choose here. And heading over to the output side, you can see that I've chosen the output one on my Tascam to be where Unity's comm traffic on the building a production channels going out. So it's not gonna have any of the comm traffic that I was inputting from the task cam. Is This is just people who are on Unity talking going out output one. This is the Unity groups page. As we learned earlier, we create our channels so that we can then assign them to groups. Now by default, Unity just has the one group made up of six party line channels. By purchasing the Expanded Channels and Groups mod, or add-on, you can expand that out to 64 different groups. In this case, I have two groups. I have my Building A group and a Building B group. In the Party Line 1 position, you assign a channel by just clicking on these uh, little up and down arrows and choosing a channel that you created previously. So I had chosen in the one position, building a production. And I have building a front of house, general, building a cameras, nursery, and security. So this is like a church scenario. In building B, I have building B production, building B front of house. These channels are not shared between the two buildings. However, general is shared. So communication traffic from building A and B uh, over general is heard by both. The cameras are not shared. Those are unique channels that I've created. Nursery and security are shared. So you can see how flexible creating groups and channels makes Unity Intercom. This is the users page. This is where you're going to be creating the usernames and the passwords for people to log into their apps. You're also going to be choosing the way you want their name to show up on the app. 
So here, here's Mike, and you can tell that I'm logged in because this is lit up in green. Here's the password. Um, I'm enabled, so that means that I'm able to log into the app. I'm an admin, which gives me the abilities like all page and the ability to unlatch all open mics. And uh, I've, this is the display name. So this is how other people are going to see me in the users page as Mike. Couple new features, channel lock and settings lock. Uh, this is the ability to lock someone out of changing channels. So this prevents somebody from switching and, and deactivating channels and changing channels. The settings lock is going to stop somebody from being able to go into their settings page altogether. It's kind of like just basically a lockdown mode, kind of a simple mode. Um, so moving over here, I have uh, illuminated the T and the L's for the talk and the listen. That means that I'm able to talk on all of these uh, party channel, party line channels. And I'm also in the group building A. So when you're looking at the users page, it's important to know what group you are currently in. So right now we're in building A. If I wanted to make a change to myself, but in my other group, which I've been allowed to be in, which is building B, I would just click over here and you can see that I have talk and listen privileges, uh, but I don't have talk and listen on the cameras and the nursery and the securities page. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself permissions on those. That's how you activate yourself. When you create a new user, you'll need to go into each group that you want them to be a part of and give them talk and listen privileges, or you can limit them. Uh, even though you have multiple groups, as you make new people, if you don't, if they're not assigned to multiple groups, then they won't even realize that there's multiple groups, and they won't be able to switch back and forth between them. Generally, that's just reserved for people in kind of a leadership role, a production role, administrative, and such. The audio I/O page is a little different. Here we are going to be focusing more on program feeds. So up here, by default, Unity Intercom allows you to have one program feed. So you can choose your default program feed. In this case, it looks like I've got audio input one. Remember, that's my in one position on the task cam in uh, I.O. box that's attached to my Mac. And it gives me the ability to name that. So as users are using Unity Intercom, they'll be able to see that there's a program feed. There'll, there'll be one selectable program feed, and it's going to be Studio. If you purchase the advanced program feed license, down here, you're going to be able to select which users have access to which program feeds, up to 64. So I have a 16-input Tascam device attached to my Mac, and so I can go over here to myself, and I can give me access to, let's say, for of the program inputs. Now, program inputs are different than the I.O. Input, uh, inputs on the channel page that we did earlier. When you are in the channels page and you're selecting an input on the I.O. device that's attached to the Mac, what you're doing is you're bringing in that audio and you're injecting it into one of the six party line channels that you select. And so that will be a good thing if, you, if it's, for example, third-party comm audio from an RTS system or a clear comm system, and you're wanting to bring that audio in and inject it into one of those party line channels so anybody using Unity can hear the, the comm from clear comm or RTS, and uh, RTS and clear comm users can also hear the people on Unity, so that we're combined. So once you've brought in and some analog comm audio from ClearCom or RTS, and you've injected it into one of the six party line channels, if I'm talking on that same channel, I'll be able to hear the people on analog comm, and they'll be able to hear me, just as long as I've set it up so that my audio goes out to them. Now, one thing that happens a lot is a lot of times these party line channels just get used as... IFB feeds, or they're used for audio in only, listen only audio. Um, so many times I've seen customers take two or three or four of these channels and just bring in different audio feeds. And that's perfectly fine, except that 
you've used up a channel to make it very difficult to communicate. It's not a channel I'm going to be talking on. It's a channel that I'm really just going to be listening on. Um, and so that does make it a little bit difficult to communicate. And that's why we recommend using program feeds for that. Um, and I'll get into program feeds in a moment. But one of the advantages of Unity 3 is that you have priority listen channels. And so what that means is you can designate one of the listen channels as as prioritized. So whenever audio comes across that prioritized listen channel, all the other channels are now going to duck. So everybody out there who's got listen-only audio being brought into one of the channels of Unity, but it never ducked before. So that was that was the problem. If you've got all these channels open, and as important audio shows up on a particular channel, it's hard for you to hear that person talking because you have this you have a you have another listen channel that's overpowering it you can set that channel as a priority channel and your other channels that maybe are too loud those are going to those are going to go quiet so you can hear this is the unity tally settings page uh, unity server is going to natively support tsl 3.1 over ethernet um, I've got a Blackmagic ATEM here selected. It uh, is going to natively communicate tally information over Ethernet with TSL 3.1, so I'm not going to have any trouble there. Um, I have selected myself. I have given myself a tally ID of 1. Um, that's going to indicate that uh, my screen's going to glow when triggered. And I am not checking myself as talent because I don't want my device camera flash to come on. Um, that would be someone in the talent position to be able to see. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that. So this is the way I've got myself set up. This is the advanced settings page. And it specifically has to do with ultra low latency uh, abilities with Unity 3. This is designed for hardwired uh, clients. And generally, they're going to be like in a studio, for example. Um, by checking this box, you're, you're enabling low latency mode. And this is basically going to um, enable a high speed processing to happen. And again, this is only for hardwired clients that have their latencies down very, very low. And um, opening output audio device for exclusive access, this is a little techie. Basically, all this means is that that rapid audio that it's coming in, you're giving the Mac computer permission to bypass the system's audio mixer, thus shaving off even more milliseconds. So by checking both of those boxes and being hardwired, you're going to be having a close to real-time audio experience, which would be much like being hardwired with like an XLR cable, for example. This is the Upgrades tab, and it's where you go in the server in the Unity server to purchase your licenses. You have to purchase a base license before you can do anything else. The Unity base license comes with three user licenses as well. So it's essentially buying the Unity software and it comes with three users. Next we have the IO license. The IO license is what's going to allow audio to leave Unity and go into an I.O. box or you know, basically audio out. So what I mean by this is by default, you can bring in one program feed, but that's it. Like if you need Unity's comm audio on one of the PL channels to go out an output so that you could use it somewhere else or if you can combine it with a third party comm, then you'll need the I.O. license. And the I.O. Li license also allows you to bring in multiple program feeds. The tally license is what's going to allow Unity to accept tally information from a variety of switchers. The online GPO license is a little different. It provides relay closure outputs that will indicate when certain users are online. This is a kind of a specific thing. So for example, if you had a light in a studio that you wanted to come on when a particular user logged in, um, the Unity Online Status GPO li GPIO license would allow you to do that. But there may, be, there may be some gotchas with that one, and you may want to call us for more information because it could pot potentially need a relay closure device, just depending on how you've set that up. The Unity Advanced Program Feed License. So this is one of the most popular uh, licenses out there. This is, remember, what's going to allow us to have up to 64 different program feeds rather than just the one. 
And then uh, the new Unity Expanded Channels and Groups. This is what's going to open up your Unity Intercom to have multiple groups. And it's going to allow you to have multiple channels, more than the six PL channels that they have. Um, it's 128 what they call virtual channels. And it's going to be 64 different groups. So if you can imagine, that would be a massive Unity system. Um, but that the Unity Expanded Channels and Groups purchase does open that up for you. And then you have our standard license packs, the two user license pack, the five user license pack, and the 10 user. So remember that Unity Intercom Base license comes with three users. So if you bought Unity Intercom Base and you bought the two user license add-on, you would have five user licenses available.